that the finance minister has started uh, his presentation. So let's cross over to Parliament for the 2023 budget presentation. I lay this document. Mr. Speaker, I would proceed to read the budget. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of Parliament, on the authority of the President of the Republic of Ghana and in accordance with the requirements under Article 179 of the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, I present to you the 2023 Budget Statement and Economic Policy of His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Akufu Adu. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that this House approves the budget statement and economic policy of the Government of Ghana for the year ending 31st December 2023. I also respectfully submit to this House the following statutory reports the 2022 Annual Report on the Petroleum Funds, pursuant to Section 48 of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. 2011 Act 815 as amended and the 2022 report 2011 Act 815 as amended and the 2022 report on the utilization of the African Union levies pursuant to section 7 of the African Union Import Levies Act 2017 Act 952 Mr Speaker this budget speech is an abridged version of the 2023 budget statement and economic policy of government. I request the Hansa Department to capture the entire budget statement and economic policy of government for the year ending 31st December 2023. Mr. Speaker, at the outset, permit me to thank you personally, the leadership of Parliament, Honorable members of this august house for your individual and collective support, understanding and cooperation in the past six years that I have had the honor and privilege to be the minister responsible for finance. As we are all fully aware, a lot has happened this year. These are very erratic times and on behalf of the President of the Republic and for myself in particular, I'm eternally grateful, first, to the leadership of the New Patriotic Party and the majority leadership and caucus of this House, and to the minority caucus of the National Democratic Congress in Parliament. I thank you on your decision yesterday to participate fully in the process of passing this budget. And to quote, you stressed how I quote, also mindful you are of the timeliness regarding the IMF negotiations and the crucial role a timely presentation of the 2023 budget will play in the advancement of Ghana's case in the negotiations with the fund. I thank you. I wish to assure this House of my strong commitment and unflinching cooperation in our collective efforts to secure a historic IMF program very soon a program that would assist the country in its post-COVID recovery efforts. Our disagreements notwithstanding what should never be in doubt, especially in the eyes and ears of the general public, is our common desire to serve the Republic. Our democracy is richer for it. Let me quote Simon Bolivar. In the unity of our nation rests the glorious future of our peoples. But Mr. Speaker, the President of the Republic who is in Qatar enjoins us to remember Nehemiah when he said, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and will not be in disgrace. And the people replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began the good work. Mr. Speaker, the year 2022 will go down as one of the most difficult and eventful years 
in the economic history of our country while we continue to deal with the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to significant reductions in our revenue and increased our expenditures enormously, we also have had to contend with the double jeopardy of the Russian-Ukraine war. What has resulted in unprecedented, what has resulted in unprecedented global crisis, ravaging all currencies and historic living and inflation levels. In the midst of these really challenging times, Parliament has in many, many instances supported government's programs presented to this House, the eventual passage of the E-Levy Act, the Fees and Charges Act, the Exemptions Act, and the 750 million Afri Exim loan, among others. These attest to the support received from this August House. At the same time, the exceptional challenges are and all going forward. Mr. Speaker, I also wish to express a deep appreciation of government to the various stakeholders, including employers, association, labor unions, civil society, faith-based organizations, Association of Ghana Industries, Ghana Union of Trade Association, bankers, academia, and think tanks, and the media for the support we received throughout the year as well as the inputs that have informed and enriched our policy choices. It is the speaker, when God's people live together in unity, the Lord bestows the blessings. Mr. Speaker, a year ago, I came to present a budget with significant revenue measures to tackle our fiscal difficulties, finance a transformative agenda of government, and sustain the post-COVID-19 recovery. However, what started as a political disagreement over revenue measures in this House triggered a series of events that significantly undermined the credibility of our budget, consequently leading to serious economic challenges as investor confidence hit a new low. This manifested in credit rating downgrades which triggered the closure of Ghana's assets to the international capital markets, tightening domestic financing conditions, and increasing cost of borrowing. The combined effects of the developments contributed to the rapid depreciation of the city and compounded the high debt service levels. Mr. Speaker, our inability to assess the international capital markets meant that for the first time in our administration, we did not have the foreign debt foreign currency to complement our foreign exchange earnings. We have had to make strenuous efforts to meet our import bill, which exceeds 10 billion annually, dollars annually, Considering our low foreign earnings, it has been difficult to meet our import requirements, including crude oil and petroleum products of about $400 million a month. At the same time, the Ministry of Finance still needs to find about $1 billion annually to keep our lights in our homes and workplaces on. Mr. Speaker, the demand for foreign exchange to support our unbridled demand for imports that undermines and weakens the value of the city. This contributed to the depreciation of the city, which has lost about 53.8% of its value since the beginning of this year. Compared to the average 7% annual depreciation of the city between 2017 and 2021. The current year's depreciation, which is driving the high cost of goods and services for everyone, is clearly an aberration and a very expensive one indeed. The increases in fuel prices, diesel currently above 20 cities a litre, and petrol 16.8 cities a litre, has led to increases in prices of most goods and services. Inflation, which we managed to bring down from 15.4% at the end of 2016 to 7.9% at the end of 2019, and remained in single digits till the pandemic hit in March 2020, is now 40.4%. It is not only the individuals and households who are adversely affected by the depreciation of the city. For us at the Ministry of Finance, the depreciation of the city seriously affects our ability to effectively manage our debt. Indeed, our stock of debt has increased by 93 billion Ghana cities this year alone due to the depreciation of the city since the beginning of 2022. Even as the state struggles to raise sufficient revenue, high inflation rates continues to eat away the already meager wages of the average Ghanaian. 
the lesson from this relapse in macroeconomic stability makes us even more determined as your government to permanently restructure and transform this economy and build resilience. Mr. Speaker, we have been honest with Ghanaians about the economic challenges that the country is facing. His Excellency the President pointed out that never have so many malevolent forces come together in a perfect storm to so dramatically impact our lives. The current challenges on the back of two difficult years since March 2020 have really tested our people and our resolve. We empathize greatly with all Ghanaians for the undue pressures that has placed on their livelihoods. We want to commend all of you for your forbearance during these difficult times. We are confident though that together and of God on our side, we will turn things around. On behalf of His Excellency the President, let me assure all Ghanaians that government is working to change this negative narrative and demonstrate our resilience as a people and our ability to rebuild for a better future. We have demonstrated this many times in our country, but more recently between 2017 and 2019, we have resolved that in the next two years, government will work with you all with a restless determination to turn around this economy. Mr. Speaker, in a few years, the Black Stars will be playing their first game in the 2022 FIFA World Cup tournament in Qatar. It is clear that we stand united as a nation behind our Black Stars. A successful passage of the 2023 budget, a successful conclusion of negotiations with the IMF and making Ghana's performance in Qatar 2022 the most successful. That is winning the cap, not only for the country, but for any African side on the World Cup stage. Will I dare say, bring this most challenging year to a very successful end. To this, Mr. Speaker, we pray, as the Bible says, behold how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. For there, the Lord commands the blessings. Mr. Speaker, events since March 2022 have taught us the pervasive volatility of our world today and the wisdom in the vision of President Akufuado to reset our economy through industrialization. This budget resolves our resolve to reset the economy and restore macroeconomic stability. But to do so, we need the support of the people of Ghana and the cooperation and approval of this parliament. Our goal now is to significantly enhance revenues significantly cut down the cost of running government, significantly expand local production, invest more to protect the poor and vulnerable, continue expanding access to good roads and technology, education and health for every Ghanaian everywhere in Ghana and the diaspora. Mr. Speaker, this budget is therefore anchored on a seven-point agenda aimed at restoring macroeconomic stability and accelerating our economic transformation as articulate in the post-COVID-19 Program for Economic Growth, PCPEG. These comprise an agenda to one, aggressively mobilize domestic revenue, two, streamline and rationalize expenditures, three, boost local productive capacity, four, promote and diversify exports, five, protect the poor and vulnerable, six, expand digital and climate responsive fiscal infrastructure, and seven, implement structural and public sector reforms. To achieve these, there are three critical imperatives, successfully negotiating a strong IMF program, coordinating an equitable debt operations program, and attracting significant green investments. This will enable us to generate substantial revenue create needed fiscal space for the provision of essential public services and facilitate the implementation of the PCPEC program to revitalize and transform the economy. Mr. Speaker, we will undertake the following actions, initiatives and interventions under the seven-point agenda. Two, aggressively mobilize domestic revenue will, among others, one, increase VAT rate by 2.5% to directly support our roads and digitalization agenda. Fast track the implementation of the Unified Property Rate Platform Program in 2023 
and review the E-Levy Act and more specifically reduce the headline rate from 1.5% to 1% of the transaction value as, a, as well as the removal of the daily threshold. Three, to boost local productive capacity, we will, among others, cut the imports of public sector institutions that rely on imports, either for inputs or consumption by 50%, and would work with the Ghana Audit Service and Internal Audit Agency to ensure compliance, support the aggressive production of strategic substitutes, including the list disclosed at the President's last address to the nation, support large-scale agriculture and agribusiness interventions through the Development Bank of Ghana and ADB Bank, introduce policies for the protection and incubation newly formed domestic industries to allow them to make the goods produced here competitive for local consumption and also for exports. To promote exports will, among others, expand our productive capacity in the rail sector of the economy and actively encourage the consumption of locally produced rice, poultry, vegetable oil and fruit juice, ceramic tiles, among others. To pursue efficiency in government expenditures will, among others, implement the government directives on expenditure measures, integrate procurement approval process with gift mess to ensure that projects approved are aligned with budget allocation, review key government programs to reflect relevance, promote efficiency, and ensure that value for money is achieved in all sectors, including OGM, and review the efficiency of statutory funds. To implement structural and public sector reforms, who among others import a debt limit? Who among others impose a debt limit on non-concessional finance? Undertake major structural reforms in the public sector by reviewing the operations of 36 state-owned enterprises, eight special purpose vehicles, 90 joint venture companies, 38 regulatory institutions, six statutory bodies, and six subvented organizations. Enforce compliance with legal and regulatory framework on foreign exchange, initiate measures to overhaul the tax structure and extractive industry, expand the gold purchase program by the Bank of Ghana to support foreign exchange reserve accumulation promote an LBMA certified gold refinery in Ghana, and promote local currency stability. To safeguard social protection programs, who among others, expand social protection programs such as LEAP, school feeding, and NHIS for the vulnerable and socially excluded. Mr. Speaker, last year, I presented our plan to get us back to pre-pandemic macro stability and growth levels, more importantly, I share the President's strategy to improve the living standards of Ghanaians and address our central challenge, unemployment. The strategy was anchored on building a sustainable entrepreneurial nation through fiscal consolidation and job creation. I'm happy to report that we have piloted the Youth Start program and launched the district level program. Mr. Speaker, we now have the commitment of our banks and development partners and are confident that the 10 billion Ghana CD program with 1 million jobs will be achieved in the next three years. We are now embarking on a journey to fundamentally reposition our economy with the post COVID 19 program for economic growth, PCP, to be supported by the IMF, the World Bank, and other friendly sovereigns and the private sector, both domestic and international, as our blueprint. We are mindful that it will require broad-based contributions and sacrifices. There will be costs to the fiscal adjustment that we intend to make in the coming years to sustain our stability, recovery, and eventual transformation. My pledge to this House, Mr. Speaker, is that there will be fiscal discipline, that every persuader that we ask the Ghanaian people and businesses operating in Ghana to continue will be spent well. The challenges we face are daunting, but we must not lose sight of the greater strength of being Ghanaian. Resilience, entrepreneurial zeal, faith, courage, solidarity, and hope. I therefore ask all of us to play a constructive role 
in getting our nation fully back on track. Ours is a country with real prospects and the challenges notwithstanding. Ghana will rise again. And my faith is premised on the fact that a lot has already been achieved, especially over the course of the Fourth Republic and our policy as outlined in this budget to reset the economy. If supported, would ensure that, indeed, we have not wasted the current global crisis, but used it to make our economy stronger and the progress and prosperity of our people even more assured. Global economic developments and outlook. Economic growth and inflation. Mr. Speaker, the global environment is fragile and the outlook remains uncertain. Global economic activity in 2022 has slowed down more broadly and sharply than anticipated. Economic growth in emerging markets and developing economies is expected to slow down from 6.7% in 2021 to 3.7% in 2022, with a similar pattern expected in 2023. In Sub-Saharan Africa, growth is expected to slow down to 3.6% in 2022 and 3.7% in 2023, from 4.7% in 2021, due to low investments and a worsening trade balance. Overall, global inflation has risen, driven largely by increases in energy and food prices. Inflation in emerging and developing economies has also risen 5.9% in 2021 to 9.9% in 2022. The war in Ukraine has further heightened inflationary pressures. The exchange rates across the major international currencies depreciated rapidly by the end of the third quarter of 2022. As of 23rd November 2022, the Ghana city depreciated cumulatively by 54.2% against the US dollar. Similarly, the Ghana city depreciated cumulatively by 48.5% against the British pound. Mr. Speaker, I now present to this August House the provisional macroeconomic performance for the first three quarters of 2022 based on our available data for the period. To better assess the macroeconomic development for the first three quarters of the year, permit me to restate the macroeconomic targets set for 2022 as presented in the 2022 Media Fiscal Policy Review. Overall GDP growth of 3.7%, and an oil real GDP growth of 4.3%, and inflation of 28.5%, overall fiscal deficit of 6.6% of GDP, primary surplus of 0.4% of GDP, and gross international reserves sufficient to cover at least three and a half months of imports of goods and services. Mr. Speaker, data on the performance of the economy at the end of the third quarter highlights the continuous adverse impact of the challenging global and domestic economy, domestic environment on the economy. As I indicated earlier, these developments have manifested through rapid exchange rate depreciation, high inflation, unsustainable debt burden, fiscal stress, and external sector shocks, among others, despite the monetary and fiscal policy interventions that were deployed in the first three quarters of the year. Mr. Speaker, the economic performance for the first three quarters of the year is summarized as follows. Mr. Speaker, provisional D GDP data from Ghana Statistical Service, published in September 2022, indicate that overall real GDP for the first half of 2022 recorded an average year-on-year -year growth of 4%, or 3.4% in quarter one 2022, and 4.8% in quarter two 2022, respectively. Non-oil GDP expanded by 4.1% and 6.2% in the first and second quarters in 2022, respectively. The latest data indicates the headline inflation accelerated to 40.4% in October 2022 from 37.2% .2 in September and 33.9% in August. The rise in the October inflation was broad-based, driven by both food and non-food prices. The monetary policy rate has increased by 1,000 basis points 
from 14.5% to 24.5% since the beginning of the year as the central bank deployed its monetary policy tools to anchor inflation expectations. Developments on the money market broadly showed rising interest rates across the yield curve. For example, the discount rate on the 91-day instrument has increased to 32.5% as of today from 12.5% in December 2021. The public debt to GDP ratio stood at 75.9% at the end of September 2022, up from 76.7% at the end of December 2021. Gross international reserves stood at 6.591 billion dollars, equivalent to 2.9 months of import cover at the end of September 2022, from a stock position of 9.7 billion equivalent to 4.3 months import cover at the end of December 2022. Fiscal developments. Mr. Speaker, the 2022 Mid-Year Fiscal Policy Review revised the 2022 fiscal framework against the backdrop of unfavorable global and domestic developments. The fiscal deficit targets were revised to 6.6% of GDP, down from the 7.4% set in the 2022 budget. Similarly, the primary balance target was revised upwards to a surplus of 0.4% of GDP from a surplus of 0.1%. This was on the back of revisions in GDP projections, adjustment in the expected yield from the 2022 revenue measures, adjustments to reflect the 30% discretionary expenditure that cuts, adjustment in interest rates, and adjustment in allocation for compensation of employees to incorporate a 15% cost of living allowance, adjustment in exchange rate on account of higher depreciation, and adjustment to the benchmark crude oil price. Mr. Speaker, provisional data on government fiscal operations for January to September 2022 shows a shortfall in revenue performance and a faster execution of expenditures. This resulted in an overall budget deficit of 41.7 billion 7% of GDP against a program deficit target of 36.7 billion, 6.2% of GDP. The corresponding primary balance for the period was a deficit of 9.6 billion or 1.6% of GDP against a deficit target of 5.8 billion CDs, 1% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, Total revenue and grants amounted to 65.4 billion, 11% of GDP, compared with a target of 67.3 billion, 11.4% of GDP, and the 49.1 billion, 10.7% of GDP recorded in the corresponding period in 2021. The outturn for total revenue and grants represents a shortfall of 2.8% compared to the period's target and year-on-year -year growth of 33.2%. The shortfall in revenue stemmed from the less robust performance recorded in all the revenue handles for the period. Mr. Speaker, domestic revenue for the period amounted to 64.6 billion, 10.9% of GDP, falling below the target of 66.5 billion, 11.2% of GDP, by 2.9%. The outturn, however, represent a year-on-year -year growth of 34% and constituted 98.8% of revenue and grants. Mr. Speaker, total expenditure including arrears, clearance, and discrepancies for the period amounted to 109.4 billion, 18.5 of GDP, above the target of 103.9 billion, 17.6 percent of GDP by 5.2 percent. Compensation of employees amounted to 27.2 billion Ghana cities, 4.6 percent of GDP, 2.9 percent below the budgetary provision of 27.9 billion, 4.7 percent of GDP. The wage bill constituted 91.3 percent of the total compensation and amounted to 24.7 billion. Interest payments for the period amounted to 32.1 million, 5.4% of GDP, against the target of 30.9 billion, 5.2% of GDP, reflecting 
the higher cost of borrowing and the adverse impact of the currency depreciation on external interest. Domestic interest payments constitute a 78% of total interest payments for the period. Mr. Speaker, the fiscal operations for the period resulted in an overall budget deficit of 44 billion Ghana cities, 7.4% of GDP, against a target of 36.7 billion, 6.2% of GDP. The corresponding primary balance for the period was a deficit of 11.9 billion, 2% of GDP, against a deficit target of 5.7 billion, 1% of GDP. The fiscal deficit for the period was financed mainly from domestic sources, amounting to 37.5 billion, 6.3% of GDP, accounting for 85.2% of the total financing. Foreign financing for the period amounted to 6.5 billion, 1.1% of GDP, and accounted for the remaining 14.8% of the financing. Public debt developments, January to September 2022. Mr. Speaker, provisional debt data as at end September 2022 shows a significant increase in Ghana's public debt, largely due to exogenous factors. The end September 2022 provisional figures indicate that total gross public debt stood at 467.4 billion Ghana cities, 48.9 billion US dollars, representing approximately 75.9% of GDP. The domestic debt component is 195.7 billion Ghana cities, which is 31.7.8% of GDP, whilst the sternal is 271.7 billion Ghana cities, representing 44.15% of GDP. The increase in the domestic debt is larger on account of rising interest costs. Domestic debt as a share of total public debts reduced from 51.6% in 2021 to 41.9% as at end September 2022. Mr. Speaker, the external debt as a percentage of the total debt stock is 58.1% as end September 2022. The sharp growth in the external debt stock is largely driven by the depreciation of the local currency. The depreciation of the Ghana CD added 93.9 billion to the external debt stock. Overall debt accumulation increased from 20.7% in 2021 to 32% as at end September 2022, reflecting the impact of the depreciation of the Ghana CD on the external debt side. Mr. Speaker, the external sector performance and the outlook will depend largely on the quick resolution of the Russian-Ukraine war and the outcome of research and fears in advanced economies. The thrust of the stream of the Senate sector will focus on rebuilding the Senate buffers enough to cover at least three and a half months of imports of goods and services which cushion the economy against adverse external shocks. This will be underpinned by, among others, bilateral support and strong remittance inflows. Mr. Speaker, the Bank of Ghana will continue to monitor inflation development and response appropriately to contain price pressures. Monetary policy will focus on using the monetary policy rate to, among others, contain inflation pressures. Since August 2022, the Bank of Ghana has successfully been working with the mining firms, international oil companies, and their bankers to purchase all foreign exchange arising from the voluntary repatriation. Update on Ghana's engagement of the fund for a fund-supported program. Mr. Speaker, since government announced its engagement with the International Monetary Fund for a supported program on 1st July 2022, we have made substantial progress. The fund assured government of a strong commitment and support in these difficult times. Mr. Speaker, government and the IMF have agreed on program objectives, a preliminary fiscal adjustment path, debt strategy, and financing required for the program to be in line with the government's post-COVID-19 program for economic growth. The PCPEC is government's blueprint to restore macroeconomic stability, promote debt sustainability, sustain economic recovery, 
and support structural reforms. Mr. Speaker, guided by the medium-term policy objectives, the following macroeconomic targets are set for the medium term 2023 to 2026. Overall real GDP growth as an average rate of 4.3%, non-oil average growth of 4%, inflation back to within the target band of 8 plus or minus 2%, and a primary balance and com commitment basis to average 0.8% of GDP in 2023, to 2026 and gross international reserves to cover at least four months of imports. Mr. Speaker, based on the overall macroeconomic objectives and the medium term targets, the following macroeconomic targets are set for the 2023 fiscal year. Overall, real GDP growth of 2.8%, non oil growth of 3% and December inflation rate of 18.9%, primary balance on commitment basis of 0.7%, and gross international reserves to cover not less than 3.3 months of imports. Mr. Speaker, on resource mobilization for 2023, total revenue and grants is projected at 143.9 billion Ghana cities 18% of GDP and is underpinned by permanent revenue measures, largely tax revenue measures, amounting to 1.35% of GDP as outlined in the revenue measures. Mr. Speaker, total expenditure, including clearance of arrears, is projected at 205.4 billion or 25.6% of GDP. This estimate shows a contraction of 0.3 percentage points of DGP in primary expenditures, commitment basis that is, compared to the projected outturn in 2022 and a demonstration of government's resolve to consolidate its public finances. Mr. Speaker, the following projections underpin the resource allocation for 2023. Compensation of employees is projected at 44.9 billion, 5.6 percent of GDP, Use of goods and services also projected at 8 billion, 1% of GDP. Interest payments is projected at 52.6 billion, 6.6% of GDP. Grants and other government units is estimated at 30.1 billion, 3.8% of GDP. Capital expenditure is, expect, is projected at 27.7 billion, 3.5% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, other expenditures mainly comprising energy sector levies, transfers, and energy sector payment shortfalls is estimated at 26.7 billion Ghana cities. Mr. Speaker, based on the estimates for the total revenue and grants and total expenditures, including areas clearance, the overall budget balance to be financed is a fiscal deficit of 1.5 billion equivalent to 7.7% of GDP. The corresponding primary balance, the deficit of 8.9 billion, equivalent to 1.1% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, I wish to notify you that budget items such as interest payments, amortization and financing will be adjusted accordingly once government's debt management strategy and financing to be provided by international partners in the context of the fund supported program have been finalized. Revenue measures. Mr. Speaker, government has consistently indicated its intention to improve the revenue collection effort by leveraging technology to enhance tax administration, identify and register taxable persons, and improve tax compliance. Mr. Speaker, government has received several proposals for review of the electronic transfer levy and is working closely with all stakeholders to evaluate the impact of the levy in order to decide on the next line of action, which would include revision of the various exclusions. As a first step, however, the headline rate will be reduced to 1% of the transaction value alongside the removal of the daily threshold. To this end, the income tax regime will undergo reforms to, among others, review the upper limits for vehicle benefits and introduce an additional income tax bracket of 
Mr. Speaker, on expenditure measures will also be pursued to support the fiscal consolidation process. In this regard, it is proposed that government will reduce the threshold on earmark funds from the current 25% of tax revenue to 17.5% of tax revenue, migrate all earmark funds onto the GIFMIS platform and ensure they use the GIFMIS platform to process all their revenue and expenditure transactions, continue the 30% cut in the salaries of the President, Vice President, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, MMDCEs, and political office holders, including those of state-owned enterprises, whilst also ensuring efficiency at the OGM. Also want to place a cap on salary adjustment of SOEs to be lower than negotiated base pay increases on single spine salary structure for each year. Fiscal contingency planning. Mr. Speaker, given the uncertainties about the macroeconomic environment, government stands ready to deploy additional tools if fiscal outturns require further interventions. On the revenue side, some of the measures that we identify for the medium-term revenue strategy being designed by government and in the context of the fund program could be implemented early on. On the spending side, MDA's budget allocations for goods and services or domestic capes will be strictly controlled by the quarterly budget allotment system. Mr. Speaker, the present economy challenges have heightened as for promotion to expand job creation while protecting the vulnerable. Government is therefore taking active steps to address the impact of these economic shocks on Ghanaians through the seven-point agenda to restore macroeconomic stability and accelerate our economic transformation as articulated in the post-COVID-19 program for economic growth. Mr. Speaker, on developing local capacity for production, as I've already indicated, Ghana's heavy dependence on imports places tremendous pressures on the city, creating an unfavorable balance of payments position. On average, Ghana's imports bill exceeds $10 billion annually and is accounted for by a diverse range of items that include iron, steel, aluminum, sugar, rice, fish, poultry, palm, oil, cement, fertilizer, pharmaceuticals, fruit juices, and even toilet roll and toothpicks. We currently have the capacity as a country to locally produce items that account for about 45% of the value of our annual imports. These include rice, fish, sugar, poultry, cement, pharmaceuticals, jute bar, computers, etc. To this end, government will target these products for import for um, export promotion by supporting the private sector through partnerships with existing and prospective businesses to expand, rehabilitate, and establish manufacturing plants targeted at producing these selected items. Mr. Speaker, the Ghana Cares for Batampa program. Mr. Speaker, it has been two years since the launch of the Ghana Cares program to mitigate the severe impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy. Significant achievement has been made with the implementation of our great activities despite the current macroeconomic challenges. Mr. Speaker, the high food prices and pressures on the local currency validates the current focus of the Ghana Cares program to bolster productive and export capacity of the private sector. To this end, an economic enclave project will focus on providing support for the cultivation of up to 110,000 acres of land in the Greater Accra, Ashanti, Central, Savannah, and OT regions are being pursued. Mr. Speaker, this initiative, which seeks to expand our production and productivity in rice, tomato, maize, vegetables, and poultry, is being led and coordinated by the Millennium Development Authority. In collaboration with other government institutions, such as the Ministries of Food and Agriculture, Energy, the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, 48 Engineers Regiment of the Ghana Armed Forces under the Ministry of Defense, the National Entrepreneur Innovation Program, and the National Service Secretariat and Ghana Enterprises Agency. Mr. Speaker, 
Consistent with the private sector-led approach, the program will engage interested private sector actors to expand in agricultural production and processing in the Asuchari, Chopoli Economic Anglove area based on a partnership framework. The same approach will be adopted for the land secured in the Ashanti Central, Savannah and Oti region to reach the 110,000 acres. Mr. Speaker, we have also initiated discussions with the Graphic Communications Group Limited to explore the feasibility of producing paper locally using the byproducts of the cultivated rice in the economic enclave at Asuchari as raw material. It is envisaged that the imports of paper will be replaced and more jobs created. Mr. Speaker, in addition to the enclave project, Ghana Cares program in 2023 will continue to offer catalytic support in the following targeted area. To this end, the program will work with Development Bank of Ghana to provide funding to interested and targeted farmers, support Ministry of Food and Agriculture to adopt and deploy the farmer registration database for the farmer input subsidy programs to enhance efficiency, support the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization to establish a continental tech hub to improve knowledge in technology and innovation by the youth in collaboration with the University of Ghana, ensure the operationalization of the foundry under a sustainable private sector management framework, provide interest rate subsidies and direct financing, including supporting prioritized sectors in the rural economy to the ARB Apex Bank and its network of banks as agreed under the AFDB supported post-COVID skills and productivity enhancement project. You start. Mr. Speaker, in fulfillment of our pledge of building an entrepreneurial nation, the implementation of the USAT program began this year. The program was successfully piloted with 70 beneficiaries and an amount of 1.98 million was distributed dispersed to support youth-led below the age of 40 years SMEs in poultry, agro-processing, ICT, textiles, and food processing sectors. Government has successfully signed an MOU with the Ghana Association of Bankers and 11 other commercial banks for the implementation of the commercial component of the program. Mr. Speaker, a launch for the District Entrepreneurship Program, DEP component of the program was held on 14 November 2022 and is expected that the launch of the commercial component of the program will occur by the end of this year to enable qualified beneficiaries access support. Mr. Speaker, the One District, One Factory Initiative continued to make remarkable progress in 2022. To date, a total of 296 1D1 web projects are at various stages of implementation, out of which 126 are currently operational. 143 are under construction, and 27 are pipeline projects. In 2023, Government will intensify support to existing and new manufacturing enterprises with technical assistance, credit facilitation, and access to electricity and other infrastructure. Automotive assembly program. Is, Mr. Speaker, in addition to the automotive assembly program, government has developed a new components manufacturing policy which seeks to support the local production and supply of components and spare parts for the automotive industry. Minister of Trade and Industry will launch and commence implementation of the policy in 2023, which is set to expand job creation. Mr. Speaker, the recent global crisis has severely disrupted inorganic fertilizer supply chains. This has resulted in sharp increases in prices, making it difficult for farmers to assess the commodity and thus threatening food security. The Ministry of Food and Agriculture is intensifying efforts to promote the local production and use of organic fertilizers. Further to this, under the subsidy program, the Ministry has increased the quota for organic fertilizer suppliers to cover the shortfall in supply of inorganic fertilizers. Additionally, Government is facilitating the establishment and the expansion of local organic fertilizer production plants with support from Exim Bank. African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Mr. Speaker, 
We will pursue strategically opportunities that ensure that we take full advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, AFCFTA, as part of efforts to pursue an export-led economic recovery. The Ministry of Trade and Industry is working with over 200 Ghanaian companies to facilitate their entry into the African market, including about 70 1D1F companies. Additionally, the AFCFTA Guided Trade Initiative has been launched to start commercially meaningful trade. The products identified for the initiative include batteries, tea, coffee, ceramic tiles, processed meat products, cornstarch, sugar, and pasta, amongst others, in line with the AFCFTA focus on value chain development. Mr. Speaker, the Ghana Export Promotion Authority will enhance its coordination role by facilitating support to key export sector stakeholders. Export trade houses will be established in selected markets to promote made in Ghana products brands, including the completion of the first ETH in Kenya. Additionally, opportunities will be created for local Ghanaian businesses and investors to invest in export products, transformation and value addition at a district level in partnership with the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. The Development Bank of Ghana. Mr. Speaker, government through the Development Bank of Ghana has established 500 million Ghana City Special Credit Program. The DB businesses in agribusiness value chain over the next five years. The priority sectors are poultry, rice, and cereals, pharmaceutical manufacturing, tourism, textiles, and garments for investments to help e build economic resilience. Mr. Speaker, to support SMEs with equity funding, DBG is also in the process of establishing a private equity fund of an initial capitalization of 30 million Ghana CDs or 400 million, 30 million Ghana, 30 million US dollars or 400 million Ghana CDs. DBG has fully onboarded four participating financial institutions and will engage other financial institutions to expand its loan channels. A total of seven loans amounting to 245 million was disbursed to SMEs, saving over 1,000 jobs. DBG has partnered with a PFI to build a digital lending platform to shorten the processing time for lending to SMEs and increase its ability to reach a lot more businesses across the country. Mr. Speaker, the National Insurance Commission is spearheading the development of agriculture insurance for farmers through the Ghana Agriculture Insurance Pool. GAIP provides traditional agriculture insurance and index-based weather insurance products to commercial farmers and smallholder farmers. An estimated $400 million in agriculture insurance will be extended to eligible farmers in 2023. Mr. Speaker, as part of efforts to ensure power is affordable for industrial, commercial, and residential use, government has substantially completed a renegotiation and restructuring exercise of power purchase agreement with six operational independent power producers, namely Car Power, Sem Power, Early Power, Twin City Energy, AXA Energy, and Senate Energy. Government, of course, is looking for the resources uh, to fund these agreements. Government has also pursued cost cutting and green initiatives, including conversion to a tolling model, refinancing of expensive debt, profiling of tariffs, and switching power plants from imported liquids, liquid fuel to finance locally produced natural gas as a primary resource. On connectivity to the national grid, a total of 157 communities were linked to the national grid as of September 2022. The Ministry of Energy will further connect an additional 400 towns under Shelf 4, Shelf 5, and 10 key projects in 2023. Mr. Speaker, substantial progress has been made on coastal fishing ports and landing sites. This has been made in the development of 12 coastal fish landing sites and two fishing ports along the coast of Ghana, namely Azim and Discov in the western region, Maureen, Fansimane, Kumfi, Mumford, Winneba, Senyabreku, 
Gomo Afeta and Mena in the central region, Teshi Osu and James Sam in the greater Accra region, and Keta in the Volta region. Mr. Speaker, overall, the project is about 95% complete and will ensure safe launching and landing of artisanal fishing canoes and promote hygienic environmental conditions. Mr. Speaker, on climate change, global warming poses major threats to the economies of climate vulnerable countries like Ghana. According to the Vulnerable 20 Loss and Damage Report, Ghana lost 15.2 billion from 2000 to 2019 to climate change. According to the World Bank Group's New Country Climate and Development Report for Ghana, incomes could reduce by up to 40% for poor households by 2050, and a loss of about a million jobs if urgent climate actions are not taken. Mr. Speaker, at COP27, the government took the opportunity to leverage its bilateral engagements to expand consultation on debt for nature swaps, as well as increase private sector investment to accelerate our transition to low carbon growth and finance our climate, our, our climate action measures. Mr. Speaker, I can report that Ghana has assumed the presidency from 2022 to 2024 of the Climate Vulnerable Forum and the chair of the Vulnerable 20 Group of Ministers of Finance of Governments. Government will leverage this opportunity to accelerate our climate agenda which is outlined in Ghana's climate prosperity plans. Social protection. Mr. Speaker, even amidst the current difficulties, we remain committed to implementing Ghana's social protection programs. We will not renege on our responsibilities towards the vulnerable and socially excluded, and the implementation of our various social protection programs will be expanded. Mr. Speaker, the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty Program, LEAP, has since its inception in 2008, supported extremely poor and vulnerable households, increasing beneficiary coverage from 144,000 in 2015 to 344,000 households, comprising 1.8 million individuals as of September 2022. Government is committed to expanding coverage to all 2.5 million extreme poor individuals as estimated by the Ghana Living Standard Survey by 2024, while improving efficiency through digitalization and assessments. Government will, in 2023, increase the value of the LEAP grant from the average of 41.75 Ghana cities per household to about 95.19 cities by month. Mr. Speaker, the Ghana School Feeding Program, which provides one hot nutritious meal each year for 3.4 million beneficiary pupils in public basic schools as of December 2021, will be sustained and increase budgets Honourable to the Minister, just a minute. The second Deputy Speaker to take the chair temporarily. I'll be back soon. Thank you. Every, every is here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Minister, let's, let's go. Yes, Honourable Minister, let's go on. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Honourable Members. Mr. Speaker. In 2023, the feeding grant will be increased to reflect the current cost of living, 
The program will also strengthen domestic production by sourcing locally produced food from the National Buffer Stock Company. Capitation Grant. Mr. Speaker, government abolish the charging and payments of all forms of fees, levies in all public basic schools and replace them with a capitation grant in 2005. This has contributed to steady increases in enrollment over the years. Mr. Speaker, government will continue to strengthen monitoring to address teething challenges in the implementation of the policy, which include timely release of the grants, misuse of funds, transparency, and poor bookkeeping and value of grant amounts. Mr. Speaker, in fulfillment of government's commitment to improve road infrastructure, the Ministry of Roads and Highways continued its nationwide road and bridge constructive program. Works on the La Beach Road project and the construction of a three-tier interchange at Nungwa area are progressing steadily. Works on the interchange currently stand at 62%. Construction of the Kumasi Lake Roads and drainage extension projects is almost complete and stands at 97%. Work is ongoing on the 17.85 kilometer of Angkor and Sawam Dual Carriage Road, which is scheduled to be completed in May 2024. Mr. Speaker, dualization on the Tema Flower and the Tema Kosombo Road has commenced. Works are ongoing on the rehabilitation of Asim Fusu, Asim Frasu Road including the dualization of 1.2 kilometers of Asim Fusu Township roads into a four-lane carriageway is at 53% completion. Additionally, work on the reconstruction of Bichem, Techimantia, Akumadan, Aguna and Panta Road, Taka Roads at 21% and 7% completion respectively. Work on phase two of the Obechevi Lamte Circle Interchange and ancillary work is at 71% completion. Additionally, construction flyover over the Accra Tema motorway from the Flower Port runabout is 56% complete. Mr. Speaker, to improve connectivity in the areas cut off by waterways, work on the construction of 50 number prefabricated bridges continued in 2022. Progress of the new bridge being constructed over River Pra to separate vehicular traffic from the rail along the Triple Prasu Dunka Road is at 87% completion. Mr. Speaker, the critical regional and interregional road projects initiated in 2019 are at various stages of completion. Completed projects include upgrading of the Golubwati Vli Road, upgrade of Insuta Beposolo 3, rehabilitation of Nkonja Rompong Kwame Krum, partial reconstruction of Bojwasi Adesso, and resealing of Talame Salaga Road. Progress on the following roads, among others, have achieved significant progress. Upgrades of Navrongo Naga Road, upgrading of Wa Bulanga Yala Road, upgrading of Salaga Ekumdepe Pandai Road, Pandai in Kachina Road, rehabilitation of Atibubu Kwame Dansu Roads, upgrading of Anyuan Kwanta Obwasi Road, rehabilitation of New Abrim of Osokuma Road, upgrading of Sefiriaso Akontombra Road, upgrading of Akrodie Sariasu Road, rehabilitation of selected roads in Greater Accra. Mr. Speaker, contract works under the Master Project Support Agreement of Sino Hydro Corporation Limited are stages of completion. Tamale Intergent Road, 100% complete. Western Region and Cape Coast Inner City Roads, 100% complete. Upgrading of selected feeder roads in Ashanti and Western Region, 100% complete. Construction of Hohoi Jassican Dodi Pepeso, 100% complete. PTC Runabout Intergent Project Takra, 60%. Sunyani Inner City Roads, 63%. Kumase Inner City Roads, 10%. Mr. Speaker, in 2023, a number of pipeline projects which are at various stages of preparation will be pursued. This includes construction of Accra Kumasi Road and Yunnan Bypass, construction of Accra Kumasi Road, Konongo Bypass, construction of the Domea Sikam Junction and Asutuari Aveyimi, including two number interchanges 
at the Dufour at the Domain and as a conjunction, Kaswa Cape Coast dualization, dualization of secondary Adembra roads, Takrade Agona and Quanta Apemanim, construction of bridge over the Volta River at Bolivo, Buepe, Ape, and Daboya bridges, and also a Chiamam from bridge and Dipe, Ituri, and Ancombra bridges. Mr. Speaker, government is pursuing the strategic decision to procure the 27.7 kilometers of the Accra Tema motorway and extensions project through the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. A PPP concession agreement backed by an appropriate toll arrangement will be presented to Parliament for approval to facilitate its execution. Provision has also been made in the 2023 and a medium term budget for the equity and viability gap funding required by a GIF special purpose vehicle to enable the project to start in earnest in 2023. The project will be delivered in phases. Mr. Svivka, the iconic nature of the project is such that when completed, there will be five lanes each on both sides of the main Accra Tema motorway stretch and six lanes each on the Tetequashi Apenkwa stretch of the road. The project will include the remodeling of the Tetequashi interchange, the reconstruction of the Apenkwa interchange, and the construction of new interchanges at the Fiesta Royal Crossroads and New Plan area. Debt Exchange Program. Mr. Speaker, the debt sustainability analysis based on the macroeconomic outlook has been conducted by the Ministry of Finance. It analyzes the country's capacity to finance its policy objectives and service its debts. It covers public, publicly guaranteed debt of central government and partial non-guaranteed debt of SOEs. The sustainability of our debt has been continuously affected by the negative impact of exchange rate depreciation, particularly on external debt as well as the crystallization of significant contingent liabilities in recent years. The current debt sustainability analysis conducted reveals that Ghana is now considered to be in high risk of debt distress. Mr. Speaker, despite the heightened debt levels, government remains committed to ensuring that debt is brought to sustainable levels over the medium to long term. To this end, we will implement a debt exchange program to address the challenges identified in the portfolio in collaboration with all relevant stakeholders, including the Ghanaian public, investor community, bilateral countries, and development partners, and foreign bond investors. Furthermore, government will continue to strengthen its oversight of all SOEs in particular. Mr. Speaker, in line with our objective to restore debt sustainability, concessional loans will continue to be the preferred financing option for projects. We, however, recognize that there may be cases where non-concessional borrowing may be required to finance critical transformative projects. Such financing will be determined within limits that are consistent with our debt sustainability program. We inform this House at the Media Fiscal Policy Review of projects that will be financed within our non-concessional borrowing limits. Accordingly, we will not publish any list of projects to be financed from external non-concessional loans in this budget, previously titled Appendix 10C. Implementation of the Cabinet Directives on Expenditure Measures. Mr. Speaker, as a first step, toward expenditure rationalization, government has approved the following directives which takes effect from January 2023. All MDAs, MMDAs, and SOEs are directed to reduce full allocations to political appointees and heads of MDAs, MMDAs, and SOEs by 50%. This directive applies to all methods of full allocation coupons, electronic cards, just to save fuel depots. Accordingly, 50% of the previous year's budget allocation for fuel shall be earmarked for official businesses pertaining to these institutions. A ban, Mr. Speaker, on the use of V8s or V6s 
or its equivalent except for cross-country travel. All government vehicles will be registered with GV Green number place from January 2023. Mr. Speaker, limited budgetary allocations will be granted for the purchase of vehicles. For the avoidance of doubt, purchase of new vehicles shall be restricted to locally assembled vehicles. Only essential foreign travel across governments, including SOEs, shall be allowed. No official foreign travel shall be allowed for board members. Accordingly, all government institutions should submit a travel plan for the year 2023 by mid-December of all expected travels to the Chief of Staff. As far as possible, meetings and workshops should be done within the official environment or government facilities. Government-sponsored external training and staff development activities at the Office of the President's Ministries and SOEs must be put on hold for the 2023 financial year. Reduction of expenditure on appointments, including salary freezes, together with suspension of certain allowances like housing, utilities, and clothing. A freeze on new tax waivers for foreign companies and review of tax exemptions for free zone mining oil and gas companies. A hiring freeze for civil and public servants. No new government agency shall be established in 2023. There shall be no hampers for 2022. There shall be no printing of diaries, notepads, calendars, and other promotional merchandise by MDAs, MMDAs, and SOEs for 2024. All non-critical projects must be suspended for 2023 financial year. Mr. Speaker, government cares deeply about our people and is very concerned about the current plight and the future of our country. The 2023 budget has been prepared with high expectations for the aspiration of Ghanaians and the brighter prospects of our economy to transition into other middle income within a decade. It reflects, Mr. Speaker, our determination and resolve to confront the current daunting economic challenges facing our nation head on and reset the economy. In the immediate term, we will work towards securing an agreement with the International Monetary Fund, execute a debt exchange program, improve the management of foreign exchange, and support our local productive capacity for food security. We are confident that the measures outlined in the 2023 uh, budget will redirect us on the path of macroeconomic and stability and growth. Mr. Speaker, the mission ahead is for the determined and not the pessimist. We acknowledge that our people have been severely impacted by the current economic challenges. As a responsive government, we have acted swiftly and boldly by developing the PCPEC and will work with local and international partners to implement it. Mr. Speaker, the 2023 budget will focus on government resolve to structurally transform the economy. We plan to aggressively mobilize domestic revenue, boost local productive capacity, promote a diversified and vibrant value-added export sector, streamline expenditures, protect the poor and vulnerable, expand the digital and fiscal infrastructure of climate awareness, and, Mr. Speaker, to implement structural and public sector reforms. We will continue, Mr. Speaker, to implement the implementation of key interventions like the U-START program, economic enclaves, 1D1F, technology hubs with the limited resources that we have complemented with the support from Development Bank of Ghana. Specifically on U-START, we intend to support 30,000 youth and under the economic enclaves, we intend to develop 110,000 acres of land for rice, maize, soya bean, as well as poultry. Funding will be sought 
from the 500 million Development Bank of Ghana fund and GOG sources will also be aligning support from our development partners to boost growth in the real sector, focusing mainly on agriculture, entrepreneurship, and value addition. Mr. Speaker, as I have indicated, it has become even more urgent to mobilize domestic revenue, especially in times like this, when our access to the international capital markets is largely closed. We urgently need to restore debt sustainability, macroeconomic stability, and grow the economy. As a responsible government, we will take the hard and popular but necessary decisions to build back better and emerge stronger. Mr. Speaker, the post-COVID, we identified the need to ramp up our domestic revenue mobilization efforts to match the performance of our peers and finance our development agenda. Last year, we started with the e level which has not yielded the resources as expected and have made appropriate modifications. Mr. Speaker, we know that we have to keep the lights on at the cost of a billion dollars annually. We know that we have to keep the hospitals running and ensure that over 5.5 million Ghanaians on NHIS are properly catered for. We know that we need to keep our schools running and pay the over 300,000 teachers every month. We know that we need to keep our hospitals and pay the over 119,000 nurses every month to keep the law courts open and ensure timely access to justice and keep the local assemblies working to deliver essential social services to our people. Honorable, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Minister, hold on. I will see the seat to the right honorable speaker. Minister, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it has also become clear that we cannot take the territorial integrity and internal cohesion of our country for granted. In the last couple of years, we have invested significantly in retooling the security sector to maintain territorial integrity, improve internal security. We have procured various equipment, including motorbikes, vehicles, forward operating bases, recruiting of security personnel, among other interventions. Mr. Speaker, our ability to continue to deliver all these critical public services will require significant resources, and we believe that together, we can raise the necessary revenues to implement them. Mr. Speaker, the demand for roads has become the cry of many communities in the country. Unfortunately, with the current economic difficulties and the absence of dedicated sources of funding for roads, construction, it is difficult to meet all these demands. In that regard, we are proposing the implementation of the new revenue measure. The major one is an increase in the VAT rate 25.2.5 percentage points to help with roads and technology improvement. This increase is expected to yield 2.7 billion, which will be used, as I mentioned, to augment funding for our road infrastructure development and digitalization. This will be complemented by a major compliance, compliance program to ensure that we derive the maximum yields from existing revenue handles. Mr. Speaker, in this budget, we have highlighted the need for robust public sector reforms to complement the existing public financial management regime. Here, the focus is to introduce private sector participation in the retail subsector of the energy sector to reduce system losses and improve delivery of services for Ghanaians. Mr. Speaker, this afternoon, the senior national team, the Black Stars, will be representing our nation for the fourth time at the Football World Cup in Qatar. 
Let us continue to bear them up in prayer and offer our support for victory to bring this cup to Ghana. Mr. Speaker, working together after missing the last uh, tournament, we have risen again and taken our place in the world stage. Let us, Mr. Speaker, uh, claim um, this victory and claim again that victory shall be us na abamu erie. Mr. Speaker, we must be inspired by the reemergence of the black stars on the world stage. We must work together to ensure that our economy rises again in the comfort to the comfort of our people. The budget offers us a better opportunity to jointly work towards rebuilding the economy and rediscovering our providential way towards our manifest destiny of greatness. So I say again, together let us rise. Mr. Speaker, let us not squander the opportunity to turn around and reset our economy, and create a brighter medium term for our country and its people. This is indeed the time to rebuild. This is the time not to destroy and to tear down. Let us work together for our collective benefits. As I said, by Nehemiah, with unity of purpose, service to the Republic, and the abiding grace of God, we shall succeed. Mr. Speaker, I Mr. Speaker, we are a great people. No fiano, Mr. Speaker, bahi. Mr. Speaker, no fiano, bahi. Mr. Speaker, let us go forward believing in the assurance of the psalmist that for the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Mr. Speaker, let me conclude and I present to you the in Kaboom, the unity budget, I beg to move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, Honorable members, in accordance with Standing Order 143, debate on the motion shall stand adjourned for no less than three days. I also direct that part of the budget relating to ministries and constitutional bodies shall stand committed respectfully to the committees responsible for the subject matter to which the heads of the estimates relate for consideration and report in accordance with Order 144. Furthermore, any part of the budget relating to revenue and expenditure shall stand committed to the Finance Committee in accordance with Order 145.
Honorable members, we will now take item six, the presentation of papers. The following papers to be presented. Six, Roman one and Roman two are to be taken together by the minister responsible for finance. Minister, you may do so now. Annual report on the petroleum funds for the, for the 2022 fiscal year. Annual report on the collection and utilization of the African Union import levy for the 2022 fiscal year. Honorable members, both reports have been duly presented and they are referred to the Finance Committee for consideration and report to the House. Honorable members, I did hear the Minister struggle to speak some gun. I don't know whether you heard him. But you heard Ebahi. It was not his fault. It is the way it's typed. It is not typed like gun. And so he was struggling to read it. Honorable members, I will now return to the leadership for guidance, if any. Speaker, we have all heard the motion that has been moved by the Minister Responsible for Finance. Which motion has been moved on the authority of the President of the Republic is to present to this House the budget statement and economic policy of the Government of Ghana for the 2023 financial year. Let me ask you for ahead. The upshot of the presentation certainly is transparency. A very pragmatic budget that recognizes where we are as a nation. A budget to revive and reposition the country. A regulars of a work program that calls on all of us to pull together. And as the minister quoted the prophet Nehemiah, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. In this context, the walls of Accra and indeed Ghana together. The speaker, I believe, as patriots, we shall all respond. Let us start rebuilding. I believe that at the appropriate time and in the full recognition that we are one people in one country with a common destiny, we shall respond to regrow this country together. On that note, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that this House takes an adjournment until tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the forenoon, first to ponder over the presentation and also to regroup to support our blasters in their enterprise this afternoon. I so move, Mr. Speaker.
for adjournment. But the leader of government business have set the tone. Today, Mr. Speaker, we have heard the Honorable Minister for Finance before this August House declare Ghana a high-risk distressed debt country. So, Mr. Speaker, this budget is a campaign day budget. <laughs> and therefore, he's put the country on the path on the path to debt restructuring, which he has announced as debt exchange program. So, Mr. Speaker, this budget is a campaign day budget. A campaign day. Because he has announced debt restructuring in the name of a debt exchange program. Mr. Speaker, my greatest expectation of the minister is to regularize his borrowing under the amended Bank of Ghana Act of 2016. You have to come back to this house to seek our mandate and authorization for your excessive borrowing from the Bank of Ghana. That needs to be regularized. Then, Mr. Speaker, today, there is no pump and fight entry. Even, the, even they, they are not happy. <laughs> that explains why, Mr. Speaker, Today, today, he is unaccompanied. Where is the vice president? <laughs> he is unaccompanied by the vice president. Okay, where is... Where, yes. Yes. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, by the minister said, unity budget. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Minister have only confirmed that Ghana's economy is now on life support. And when you are on life support, two things can happen. A recovery or the unknown. He has our prayers that will help him to recover the economy. I beg the second the move. So the minority leader there just um, wrapping up proceedings in the house. It is expected that the house will now take an adjournment. But let me run through you some of the key decisions that the finance minister has been announcing in today's budget. He's been announcing that year 2022 has been such a big year. He says government has a seven-point agenda. Um, he's been announcing that um, e-levy will now be reviewed from 1.5% to 1% and the daily threshold which used to be 100 Ghana City has now been removed. So any amount you, I mean, use or any amount you transfer on e-levy will now attract their tax. The government is also reviewing the um, income tax to some 35%. But generally the mood in the house has been that of somber mood because normally there would have been noise from both the minority and majority side. We've heard there from the finance minister closing the budget but with no standing ovation, with no claps from the majority side. We know that they had some concerns. They wanted the finance minister out. The president has been able to convince them not to do so. But this budget has introduced some significant revenue measures, including a cap on how MMDs can be spending. Um, there's a salary cap on SOE. School feeding grant is now going to be reviewed upwards. There's a freeze on new tax waivers and government case on a Batampa project. So the Speaker of Parliament is now adjourning the House to tomorrow, Friday, when leadership and members of Parliament will be expected to debate this budget presentation and also make comments on the specifics. But like the Speaker of Parliament has been saying, they are taking this agenda because the Black Stars will be play playing and these are issues and matters that will be dealing with. So the House has now taken an agenda and stay with Joy News. We'll be going down there. We'll be getting more reactions from members of parliament. We'll be getting more reaction from the key persons involved in this to see what they make of this. But you heard there from the minority leader say that this is a budget that is called a campaign day and that the budget does not present any hope to Ghanaians. So 
We'll be getting down there. We'll be getting reaction for you right here on Join News.